Hello, praise the Lord. Allow me to take this opportunity to thank everyone. You, my viewer, it is a great privilege that you are viewing this video. I believe that you are going to be blessed tremendously. And uh, my plea to you is that as you watch, comment, share, let this video reach as many people as possible so that we fight ignorance in the church. We fight because the people of God, these are people of God that are perishing because of ignorance. And by the grace of God, God has given us the, uh, the word that we can dissect into the word and capture the speakings of the word to his generation. That is what we are doing. So this video is for the many people as possible. Share it with your brothers, your friends, siblings, relatives, anybody. Let them hear the word. Hallelujah. Now, today I want to talk about a principle that is very, very powerful and I believe that if you capture this principle it will be the turning point in your life in your family in whatever you are doing whether in business whether in ministry whatever it is that you are doing that of your area if you capture this principle and apply it if you understand it it will be of a great help to you you see the Bible says that and they shall know and you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free at some point the truth that has just been thrown to a person may not be of help to that person even though it is a truth if the truth that has not been explained a truth that has not been classified a truth that has not been simplified to the understanding of the people may be a truth but still it may not be of help to the people that hear it a truth that becomes of help is the truth that people knows the people get to understand it and that is why we are doing this so there is a principle that i'm about to talk about here and apart from just knowing it as a principle understand it let it enter and begin to apply it you will see a tremendous growth in a way that you have never seen now go with me into the book of luke chapter 2 verse 52 the bible says and jesus increased in wisdom and stature and he found favor with both God and men. Another other version say Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and he found favor with both God and men. I want to talk about the principle of increase. The principle of growth. Many people want to see increase in their fellowships, in their ministries, in their businesses, in everything that they are doing, whatever it is. Our goal, our desire is always to see increase, is always to see growth, whether it is in small capacity. But the, the fact is you are seeing growth. You are not just stagnant. You are not just at one position, at one place, per time. Here come, here goes. You are just stagnant. Everyone desire is to see growth, is to see increase, is to see expansion. But many of us do not know how to this increase or growth come to happen. That is why tonight I'm here to tell you. Listen to me and listen very well. The principle of growth is growth the secret of increase is increase if you want to see increase in your business then you must increase your skills if you want to see growth in your ministry you yourself as an individual as the leader there you must work towards growing yourself so that you grow it is your growth that will attract the growth of that thing that you want to see. Listen, Jesus, the Bible says, He grew in wisdom and stature. Let me talk about wisdom, then I talk about stature. Listen, it was very, very difficult for God to entrust Jesus with many or large number of people if he has not increased in the wisdom of handling these people. As long as his wisdom was still limited, 
the people that he was able to interact with, the people that he was able to teach, the people that he was able to impact were also limited. There are some people that you will only have access to, interact with, befriend, be partners with, according to the level of your wisdom. If your level of wisdom is low, there are certain people that you will not be able to interact and handle in this life. So, there are some people that God has been bringing you in your business. There are some people that God has been bringing in your ministry. But because of your low level of wisdom, your low level of wisdom has been sending them away. So, there are people that have come as financiers in your ministry. There are people that have come to stand with your ministry that they will see that the development, everything to do with finances are catered for from their pockets, from their businesses. But because your level of wisdom is so low, you have been thinking and seeing that these people are coming like to maneuver and to take charge of your ministry. In that, because they are in, they give a lot of money, they can now uh, indirectly control your ministry or your business. That is a low level of thinking. You see? So, there is a time that when you grow in wisdom, there are people that will come that your wisdom and their wisdom can merge. Your wisdom and their wisdom can marry and go together. That was why Jesus had to increase in wisdom. Because Jesus, the Bible is telling us, he handled the, the Sadducees. Jesus worked with the Pharisees. Jesus, he, he, he met different people with, from different backgrounds and different capacities. And there was a need for greater level, greater degree of wisdom to handle all these people without any of them feeling discriminated. That is why he had to increase in wisdom. Listen to me and listen good. Your level of wisdom will determine the number and the kind of people you are handling. It will limit it to a given degree and a given area and a given type of people you are handling. Number two, the Bible says Jesus did not only increase in wisdom, but he also increased in the stature. In the stature here, of course, number one, you realize that stature has to do with the physicality of a man, the physical structure of a man. But in real sense, that is not the real thing that I want to say here. I want you to understand there are some people that are young physically, but their mind, they have grown inwardly. They have read books. They, have, they are ex more, more exposed to so many things that in their mind, in their intelligence, they are grown-ups, yet young men in the physical. So when we are talking about Jesus increasing in stature, we are not only talking about the physical structure. In fact, the physical structure of a man is the only thing that it can increase or grow without you doing anything. Your age is the only natural thing that will grow or increase with or without you doing anything. But if you have to grow in every other area of your life, except your age, you have to do everything. There are so many factors that you must put in place. If it has to do with the growth of the mind, you have to read books, get exposed, talk to different people, expose yourself to so, many info, so much information. That is about the mind. If you want to grow your body, go to the gym, eat different kinds of food. So you realize that it is only age that can increase or add itself without you doing anything. But the rest will take you everything for them to manifest number three so i've just talked about increase in wisdom and increase in stature increase in stature here has to do with capacity capacity building structure there is no way you can be trusting god to send 100 people in your ministry if your structure your level of wisdom your level of uh, handling men, your structure, the way you have grown, your church structure can only co accommodate 10 people. Where will these other 90 people be? 
So if you want to see 100 people coming into your ministry, first of all, grow in wisdom. Let your mind, let your wisdom be speaking as the minister or a leader of a thousand men. Yet physically you are only 20 people. If you have already grown in wisdom of seeing and handling a thousand men, yet physically you are 20, it will be very easy for God to send those people as many as possible, those a thousand, because already your mind has grown to the level that they can, it can accommodate and handle them. Already your thoughts, feelings and everything, the way you are speaking, your language is already able to accommodate the thousand people. But if your mind is only limited to 20 people, there is no way God can send a thousand people. Because your level of wisdom will not be able to handle them. Your level of understanding will not be able to handle a thousand people. So if you want to see growth, grow first of all. You yourself grow fast. Grow in wisdom. Grow in understanding. Then structure. Build structures. Build capacity. Listen. Water takes the shape of the container. As long as the container is small, there is no more water that can be added in it. If I have a 5 liter jar and I have a water, uh, water in a 20 liters container, if I want to transfer the 20 liters container in a 5 liters uh, water jar, jar, the 5 liter jar will take its portion, the 5 liters. The remaining 15 will have no place, no uh, space to occupy. To mean the limited container has just taken what is enough for it, leaving 15. So if I am to contain, if I am to transfer the whole of these 50, 20 liters in a, a 5 liters jar, I will have to expand the 5 liters jar to a level that it can contain 20 liters of water. That is why I'm telling you, if God is to entrust you with so many people, if you are to handle a billions, if you are to handle many people, you have to grow in a structure that your structure can contain the many people that are coming. There are people that God cannot give one million. God can entrust them with 90,000, 100,000. If it goes much, 700,000 but they will never handle one million. Why? Because their level, their structure is limited, that it cannot go, it cannot stretch to contain a hundred, a one million. If this man wants to contain one million, he will have to grow to the level that he can contain one million. It is him to grow. Jesus grew in stature and wisdom. Listen, the other versions begin by Jesus grew in wisdom, then stature. Jesus grew in wisdom, then wisdom provided a platform for the structure, the growing of structure, the building of structure. Every time, everywhere, understand that wisdom should precede structure. Wisdom should precede, it should come before building the structure, the stature of something. Sometimes you want to build an auditorium, you want to build a business. But if you, yes, you can build it with or without wisdom. But if you're building outside wisdom, you will realize there are so many bias, there are so many mistakes that have been made. That is why you should get first of all wisdom and use that wisdom to build. That is why Jesus first of all grew in wisdom, then stature. As he was increasing in wisdom, it was not only wisdom that was increasing. That increase in wisdom was enabling the increase of stature. As you are reading a lot of books and getting a lot of information, the things that you can invent, the things that you can imagine of, the things that you can uh, innovate, are also, that capacity is widening. 
that 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 gap or that you, that space is widening that is why we are being told to read books to expose ourselves let us watch documentaries let us hear journal let us read journals let us read them and uh, listen to people that have gone ahead of us in different fields and capacities let us listen to them so that we expand our capacities because these people as they talk as we read their writings there is an information that is entering us and within that information it enables us to think outside the box. It is enabling us to see some things that we were unable to see. So you realize that somebody wants to build a house and because he never gotten an information that was very vital for the building of that house, he is building a structure, but in that structure there is a way, there are some mistakes that he, had, he will make that if he had read and read and in, exposed himself or herself to given information, he would have done it in another way. That is why I'm saying increase comes with increase. If you want to have so many people hearing you, listening to your videos, listening to your teachings, you yourself, first of all, increase in the type, the kind of videos you are making. What is the quality of videos you're making? What is the content? If you have increased until it is something quality, automatically people will come, people will listen to them. People will, if the quality is good, the content is good, everything is quality, people will just come. Why? Because you have increased. But why should somebody come and waste his time in a video that is taking one hour, the content is shabby, it is something that is not, it is very shallow, and even the quality of the picture that has been used is poor. You see, if, some, if that kind of a picture or that kind of a content or a post, cannot attract so many people. If so many people are to hear your videos and watch your videos and view and comment and uh, like it and share it, it means it has met certain standards. So if you want so many people to come and listen and watch your videos, you also you have to grow to a level that can satisfy their demand. The principle of demand and supply is always in a, at a equilibrium, you see? If the demand is high, that tells you that the quality, the supply must also be good and it can only be high, the demand can only be high if the content is quality and it is something good, you see. Then the Bible continues to say, Jesus did not only increase in wisdom and stature alone, but it continues to say that he found favor with both God and men. I want you to listen to me and listen good. If you have found favor with the both, if with only God, yes, you are right, but you are still wrong. Again, if you find favor with only man and you have not found favor with God, you are still in problem. Men will accept you, but you will have nothing to offer to them. But if you found favor with God, yes, you have something to offer to men. You have the anointing, you have the grace and every other thing, but they hear him anointing people coming to listen to you, the grace that makes men, or the dynacasal grace that attracts men to you, is not there. The acceptance, the favor of God, the favor of men, you lack it. That is why, as you are increasing in wisdom, make sure you also increase in the structure, so that the favor that God is going to bring to you, when God brings favor, that favor, will come in form of friends. It will come in form of um, work, employment, money, and every other thing. Let him, now that favor, when it comes, it finds a capacity that can handle it and can store it. There is something wrong and a big problem if you have increased in wisdom and you have found favor with God, but you have not increased in structure. Why? Because where will all these favors that you have found with God in terms of money, influence, and everything. B, where will they be stored? How will they be managed if the structure is limited? That is why this thing is sequential. Number one, you increase in wisdom. Number two, you increase in the structure so that the wisdom will provide an opportunity to build a structure. After the structure has been built large enough, then the favor of God will bring what is to stay in the structure that has been built. Then, a favor also with the man. I want you to listen and listen good. 
wealth, resources, money, whatever you need today is in the hands of men. Your today's desire, that which you have been praying for, is another somebody's lifestyle today. There is a dream car that you are praying for God and trusting God to one day grant it to you. That dream car is someone's car right now and is even praying for another car. There is a house that you have been praying and trusting God that one day you will build such kind of a house. There is somebody somewhere who is owning that house. In fact, he is tired of that house. He wants even to sell it. You see? So, if you find favor with God and men, the resources that God has placed in the hands of men will find themselves into your way. Those resources will find themselves in your, in your, what how do I call it? In your, in, in, in your structure that you have built. Listen to me and listen good, blessed people. Let it not be that you have grown in wisdom or you have found favor with God and with the man, but you have not grown in wisdom and structure. It will be a great destruction. It will be a great disadvantage. It will be a, a great shame if you have found favor with the God. You have found favor with the man, but you have not grown in wisdom. These people that you have found favor with, your lack of wisdom will drive them away. These people you have found favor with, your lack of wisdom of how to manage and handle them and communicate with them, bring them together, harness harmony among them, will, bring, will send them away. God will send favor of men in, 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 in a way called uh, destiny helpers. When you have found favor with God and the man, God will send destiny helpers. When destiny helpers have come, let it not be that your lack of wisdom, your lack of understanding, your lack of language barrier, your lack of uh, patience, your lack of training, your lack of handling issues maturely drives them away. Let it not be that after finding favor with the God and the man, your lack of capacity is so low that it cannot contain the the pressure that you are the, the grace of God in uh, 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 the grace of God through influence that he has given you cannot handle there are people that are so influential today there are people that God has given this thing called influence that if they say yes a whole generation a country can burn if they just say no, there are some things that can not work in a given country and territory. That is a level of influence. So you have to grow in a level that you, your wisdom, you know when to say no and you know when to say yes. Because your no and yes sometimes can make a country burn, sometimes can make communities fight. I don't know if somebody's understanding what I'm talking about. That is why I'm saying. Growth comes with growth. Increase comes with increase. Increase comes because you have increased. If God is to allow uh, people, a given number, 10,000 people to come and sit under your teachings and the mentorship, He will allow them to come and sit under you because you have grown to the level that you can teach them. They can draw from your well. Your well is not shallow. It is so deep that it can serve generations and generations. That is why we have been told to spend time digging our well. If it has to do with reading, let us read. Let us sit down and read books. If it is about prayer, let us disappear, go into the secret place and pray so that we get something that we can offer to our generation. Increase comes because there is an increase somewhere. It is until you grow to a certain level, that is when God can allow certain levels of influence, certain levels of people, certain level of increase to come to you. For as long as the container is small, the quantity that that container can also hold is also small. But if your capacity is enlarged, is enlarged, you can hold a lot of things, so many things. 
So let us increase in capacity. Let us increase in wisdom. You may not even be a preacher, but read the word of God. Read the Bible. Read the Christian books. You may not be a, a business student. Just read about business books. As you read this in this book, you are getting knowledge. You are getting insights about business. Sometimes God may allow through the favor with men. Sometimes God can allow some businessmen to come your way. And that is the way which you will be blessed. Increase comes with the increase. If you limit yourself not to grow, <laughs> your business can also not grow. If you limit yourself, your ministry not to grow, People will not come. Enlarge in your prayer altar. Enlarge your capacity. Pray and pray. Seek God. Read the Bible. God will send a man. God is a God for all. He loves everybody. Why would he send a man to listen to your shallow teachings? Why will he send a man, a large crowd, thousand, to come and listen to your shallow teachings? Why will he send a man to come and you destroy them with your limited knowledge, your limited understanding? Why? He will not. So increase comes with increase. I believe you have been blessed. In the Bible, there is one man, uh, I think this one is in the book of Acts of the Apostle, chapter 18 there. There was a one man, I think he was called, I, 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 I've forgotten his name. This man only knew about the baptism of John. He only knew about the baptism of John. He was so influential, very fluent in speech, but he was only limited to the baptism of John. So how is it, how is it, try to think of it. Why would God bring 10,000, 1 million people to listen to you, yet the information that you carry is so limited that if you limit the people that are listening to it, still they will not grow. God is not careless. We will not say it is until you grow to a level where you can teach, impact a generation. That is why when he will release a generation into your hands, that is when he will give you the key to a generation. There are some of you, you want God to give you the key of nations, the key of Africa, the key of America, the key of your country. You want to take over the key of Kenya, the key of Zimbabwe, the key of South Africa. Yet, you cannot handle just a mere shock, a mere, just a pressure from small, small people. That people are calling you or people have decided to mock you in uh, your social media post. And that mock, mockery in your social media uh, page as a... Uh, uh, interfered with your peace, it is like an acid has been poured on you. No, God will not entrust you. Why? Why would God give, make you a president of Kenya? Yet you just know how Kenyans are. The noise in Kenya, <laughs> the noise that people make in Kenya, the pressure that comes on the president that sit on that seat, are you able? Have you built the stamina enough that you can handle that kind of pressure have you built capacity enough that you can stand the test of time why would god make you a president yet you cannot even lead in your sub county you cannot even lead an association a farmers association youth association school you cannot even be a class prefect you you are shy you don't have the capacity. You cannot stand and deliver a speech to your teachers. Yet you are praying, God, give me the key of Africa. God is not a fool. He will not give you. It is until you grow to the level that when he gives you the key of Africa, the same way he gave Reynard Bonke of blessed memory, the key of Africa, he knows that you are going to do the same impact that Reynard Bonke 